you know, I think people are missing is the having coming up in, in a couple months, and that's going to double the fair value. So fair value today is somewhere low 50s. We'll just call it 50 to, to round numbers. The having doubles fair value. Well, why is that? Well, you think about it. If the block rewards get cut in half, half of the miners would suddenly go out of business because their costs are fixed. So the price actually has to rise. It says that the, the fair value would be 100. Well, by spring, I mean, by uh, summer this year, we'll enter what's called crypto fall. So we're in crypto summer right now. Crypto fall is where we get the parabolic crazy. The past few days have seen a wave of positivity sweep through the Bitcoin and overall cryptocurrency market. On Monday, Bitcoin, the leading cryptocurrency by market cap, surged to a new yearly high of $50,000, marking its highest price since December 28, 2021. This milestone coincides with growing optimism for the Bitcoin having event expected in April 2024. The introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs has further fueled bullish sentiment and strengthened the overall cryptocurrency market. The previous bearish sentiment triggered by the GBTC sell-off now appears to be firmly in the rearview mirror, as recent data from Bloomberg indicates that Bitcoin ETF inflows have surpassed GBTC outflows for 10 consecutive days. Inflows have been accelerating, with last Friday alone recording $51.5 million in inflows, surpassing expectations. Additionally, newly launched Bitcoin ETFs have swiftly accumulated assets, with nine ETFs amassing 28,119.25 Bitcoin and holding over $10 billion in assets in just one month of trading. These positive developments have significantly boosted the leading cryptocurrency, which has surged by over 177% in the past week, commanding a 52.4% dominance compared to the overall cryptocurrency market. Renowned fund manager Mark Yusko, founder, CIO, and managing director of Morgan Creek Capital Management, predicts that this is just the beginning of Bitcoin's upward trajectory. With the recent approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, the upcoming halving event, and growing interest in Bitcoin, Yusko foresees even greater excitement and opportunities for Bitcoin investors in the near future. Before we continue with the rest of the video, do check out daily 5-minute crypto newsletter with all the latest crypto and Bitcoin news. It's a fantastic analysis of on-chain crypto data and breakdowns, and the best part is it's absolutely free. They'll cover expert predictions, breakdowns of on-chain crypto data, and any breaking news you need to know, all in a nutshell. Click the first link in the description and enter your email to join over 50,000 others in becoming a better crypto investor right now. Almost how I expected it to go, except for the, the last little uh, wrinkle, which was I didn't anticipate Vanguard, UBS, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, basically coming out and saying, no, you, our client, can't put your own money in this approved product. I really thought this was like the last barrier for all the big advisors to to gain access. And so that, that surprised me a little bit. Now, when I think about it, it doesn't surprise me at all because they got the call from Ms. Warren saying, hey, we don't like the fact that Gary went ahead and approved these. We don't think he should have. He kind of had to. I mean, the courts told him he had to because he had no reason to deny them. And so from that perspective, I, I didn't anticipate that. I thought the inflows would be more 10 billion-ish in the first few days. And we only had you know more like three, four. Um, so that surprised me a little bit. Uh, on the other side... It played out almost exactly how I thought it would. Um, you had the inflows coming in, which were robust. I mean, you know, BlackRock's up to over $3 billion, Fidelity's at $2 billion. Um, Bitwise and, and uh, uh, ARK are, are nipping at their heels at just under a billion. So that's all great. But the outflows from GBTC were expected as well. But I think people kind of didn't think about that when they were thinking about, oh, number go up as soon as, as the demand increases. And the part that I really didn't anticipate, although I did tweet out about this a little bit, um, there was a little known change that was happening the same day as the approval of the ETFs, which was there was a new line of futures being introduced uh, at CME 
And basically what that means is there were going to be a whole bunch more short sellers on the other side. So I think what happened, you know, my, you know, I don't have any inside baseball, but what I think happened was some of the big dogs accumulated Bitcoin leading up to the launch. And that pushed us from kind of 40K up to that, you know, momentary spike to 47. And then you have the launch and they start selling to themselves, right? So they could secure supply. But then the people shorting the futures jump on and you had the, you know, flash crash down. And everybody's, oh, see, it's a total failure. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't judge a launch in minutes or days. And just for perspective, right? Two of the three, you know, the the BlackRock and the Fidelity are number five and number eight, I think, of the top 10 selling ETFs in the world. That's pretty cool. And uh, together, the newborn nine did better than the entire class of 2023. I made a statement leading up that, you know, there's three, thir- 30 trillion, 30 trillion in accounts managed by UBS, Merrill Lynch, Raymond James, Vanguard, et cetera, controlled by, you know, advisors, boomer money. And I said, at least 10 basis points of that is going in this year. So that's 30 billion. I actually think 1%, 100 basis points is going in and that's 300 billion. And I think I'm right on this. That 300 billion would be more fiat converted into Bitcoin than all of the history of Bitcoin. Recent data from on-chain analytics firm Sentiment indicates that Bitcoin investors are gearing up for significant activity in the coming months. According to the data, money has been consistently flowing out of exchanges for about a month, resulting in the lowest Bitcoin balance across exchanges in six years. This decline has led to the supply of Bitcoin on exchanges dropping to just 5.8% of the cryptocurrency's total circulating supply marking the first time it has fallen to such levels since December 2017. Considering that Bitcoin's total circulating supply has increased since then, this decrease is even more notable. The report highlights that the mass exodus from exchanges began on January 10, coinciding with the SEC's approval of 11 spot Bitcoin ETFs. This suggests that many Bitcoin investors have shifted their focus away from the GBTC sell-off, anticipating numerous long-term positives ahead in 2024. Returning to Mark's interview, he further discusses his outlook for Bitcoin throughout the remainder of the bull market. Two things I think happen this cycle. One is I believe the halving cycle, the doubling of fair value is contingent on the fact that block rewards are cut in half. Therefore, miners would be in trouble if the price didn't move. Ah, but what about ordinal? Now we have ordinals and we have transaction fees. So let's say, and again, I'm going to make these numbers up. Let's say that that impact is 50%, meaning we're going to have 50% less upside from the reduction of block rewards because the miners can make up some ground through transaction fees. So let's say we go to 75 instead of 100. That's actually where I think we're going to go. Call it 75 to 80. Um, Just to be conservative, we'll keep it 75 because of transaction fees. Now, now I guess if Luke Dasher gets his way and we fork off and we have no more ordinals and no more transaction fees, then we're back to 100. But I don't think that's going to happen. But I, I like him, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I like ordinals. but And I own some assets on org. So I like on-chain milk. But I I think 75 is, is the new fair value. We'll move from now to the having to the 50. Then post having 50 to 75. How fast? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So then we get 75. Well, now the traders and the speculators and eventually the gamblers. Well, this cycle, I think there's less leverage, right? They clamp down on Binance and they clamp down on Voyager and Celsius. And so there's just less leverage. So let's say in the previous cycles, we went 2.3 times to 2.6 times fair value. Let's say this time we only go two times fair value. You know, that seems fair. 
So we go from 75 to 150. Now, that 150 has some volatility to it. You know, you can't predict a point. So if there's more speculation, we get a little higher than 150. If there's less speculation, you get a little less. But somewhere in that 150 range seems, I won't say guaranteed, but seems highly logical for the high point of this cycle. You know, does it have to be 150? Could it be 180? Sure. Could it be 120? I don't know. Um, I've seen a lot of smart people predicting anywhere from 100K to 120K, um, 104K, Tommy Mustache, um, Tim Peterson's at 104K. Um, no, somebody else was at 120. Now, Max is out there. Oh, it's going to be 250. <laughs> There's going to be a God candle. Like, I love Max. I love Stacey. But I, I don't see that. Um, I think there's not enough leverage to get us there. So, no, I'm a 150. Mark's prediction of $50,000 for Bitcoin has already materialized, suggesting that Bitcoin may maintain this crucial level firmly after further days of trading. Securing this level before experiencing a significant rally could potentially propel Bitcoin to reach $60,000 to $70,000 per Bitcoin in a matter of weeks. As the bull market progresses, prices are expected to continue surging possibly reaching Mark's prediction of $150,000 for Bitcoin before the market cycle concludes. It's remarkable to note that despite Bitcoin reaching these levels earlier in the last cycle, the current market appears to be just beginning, with rapid movements occurring at a dizzying pace. What are your thoughts on Mark's Bitcoin outlook and prediction? Do you believe $150,000 represents the best-case scenario for Bitcoin this cycle, or do you anticipate even higher prices? Feel free to share your comments and observations below. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.